Hey guys, uh, welcome to another screencast on OpenShift. So today I kind of thought I will show you how to install the powerful Laravel framework. Um, for those of you that don't know the Laravel framework, it's a PHP framework that has changed the way our people have uh, been developing or using frameworks in PHP. And uh, Laravel is really uh, uses sort of like um, existing tools. So much like every open, uh, every other open source project. I mean. Um, uh, Laravel relies on some pretty much stable um, components from the Symfony project and I must say that uh, the author uh, Taylor Otwell has done a great job in kind of creating some very nice wrapper around some of the Symfony components and makes it very easy for developers and yet very powerful for professionals to build very modular and scalable applications. Alright, so enough about Laravel and uh, more about OpenShift anyway. So um, basically, well, we're going to use the same principle we used in the previous video about creating the applications for, uh, you know, like the WordPress application uh, using the REC command line tool. I can see how convenient that it is. That is. So um, I'm on the OpenShift uh, Quick Starts page, and um, like I said, you have a lot of. Uh, Quick starts that people have built. Uh, so anyway, in my implementation of um, you know OpenShift Origin, I created a custom entry for Laravel. Uh, so basically, if you click on Add Application here, you can pick the Laravel for application. But um, I would prefer to show you in the RC CLI tool. Uh, this way, it makes it uh, you know kind of you kind of understand the CLI uh, concept anyway. So um, all right, so I'm going to you know I already have a Laravel Quick Start. Um, that I created earlier. Uh, so if you visit the quick start, uh, you can see I've created a series of uh, instructions and uh, you know, kind of you can visit the page on GitHub and, and all that. So anyway, so I've uh, I've kind of created uh, what I feel should be, you know, documentation for that. So you can use the RC create app command uh, to create the PHP 5.4 application on MySQL 5.5. Uh, so this is another format if you like you can create an application and then add a cartridge later to the application or you can just create everything in one line like we did um earlier so i'm just going to go ahead and do that as well so we're going to use the rc if i can type rc right so app create so rc app create and then we're going to call it laravel and we're going to use the PHP 5.4 cartridge and the MySQL 5.5 cartridge here. And like I said, uh, maybe we can use the medium size this time around and uh, we can create it for the OpenShift user. All right. So like you've seen in the previous one, you can see the gear size this time around is medium because we specified medium here. So, um, you know, give this some time to create the application and then we continue from there. Okay, so the it has created the PHP MySQL cartridges application. So you can see our application is ready at the Laravel pass. Uh, but at the moment, no, we don't really have the Laravel code yet. Um, and uh, we're going to use a different um, technique. We're going to add the Laravel, um, the quick starts um, as the upstream master so this way we can pull from uh, what we have in the upstream here so I'm just going to kind of um, go into the Laravel application and I'm doing that because here you can see it cloned the github repository for the Laravel application so I'm going to paste that now and we're going to pull from the repo and so this will go ahead and pull in the source from the GitHub page. And one thing you need to know also Laravel, uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to show you how to set this up in the OpenShift Origin environment is um, the support for Composer, right? So Laravel uses Composer to install its dependencies, has a big um, uh, Composer JSON file. And one of the things um, you will notice is uh, OpenShift at the moment doesn't really have a very good support for uh, composer so what this framework uh, what the quick start what my quick start does 
is to kind of um, pull in a copy of Composer in the temporary directory and use it to install the dependencies and do some upgrades and all that. Anyway, so um, once that's done, uh, we need to make some changes. So uh, if you're wondering what kind of changes here, you can see um, we need to uncomment the line that has this, um, this code in the applications in the OpenShift actions hooks and build. So we'll talk about action hooks in other screencasts. Um, all right, so with our directory open here, uh, we go to OpenShift action hooks build. Uh, so I'm going to uh, kind of uncomment this line. Uh, save it and we need to commit that all right so we need to use git add uh, git commit all right so we're going to specify that we want to install composer dependencies all right and once we do a git push now this is go ahead and push to our OpenShift installation here. You can see stopping the PHP cartridge, stopping the MySQL cartridge, and it's going to do quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of work. So um, instead of making you stay here and wait until this is complete, I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's uh, when it's done, and then of course uh, we continue from there. Okay, so um, the Deployment has completed here. You can see um, at some point it was um, installing Composer. Uh, this is what the Quick Start does: install Composer and, of course, um, uh, kind of run the post install script to optimize Composer as for Laravel. And you can see that uh, the deployment has been successful. And uh, we can go ahead and try, you know, the application here. So. Um, here you can see in our list of applications uh, we have two uh, now uh, it's three uh, this is Laravel you can see we're using two cartridges here uh, yeah we're using the medium uh, the medium has three gigs anyway so you can see how that works and hopefully uh, we can bring up the Laravel application here all right I'll Guys, so you can see we have Laravel 4.1 on OpenShift. Uh, this one has also been modified to use the database credentials from the, you know, using the environment variables. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have um, questions, comments, uh, please drop them in the comment box below and um, hope to talk about this one. So um, thanks for watching this and uh, see you in the next one.